Hello, welcome to The Learning Curve. I'm Marjorie Began. The 2018-19 scholastic year has begun and here to talk to us about changes that have been made and others that are being implemented in the Mansfield School System is Teresa Murphy, Superintendent of Mansfield Schools. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, let's begin today uh, talking about some of the renovations that have been done to the schools. Oh, thank you. Uh, we got a lot accomplished this summer. In addition to just having the schools clean and shiny and ready for students, uh, we've done a lot of work to the facilities under the direction of our facilities director, Matthew Jacques. He has uh, led quite a few projects this summer, including uh, the most recent completion is the bleachers at Mansfield High School. Uh, the bleachers uh, on the south side were replaced and the south side has now become the home side for the Mansfield Hornets fans. Uh, we've also replaced a number of the 50-year-old lockers in Qualters Middle School. Uh, I think what's most apparent to people driving through our East Street campus are the uh, pavement and the road improvements. At the high school, the middle school, and the Robinson parking lots, they were seal-coated. Seal mm -hmm. uh, the JJ and Robinson shared parking lot has been uh, completely repaved. Uh, JJ also had the bus loop and the driveway uh, repaved and also sidewalks improved. Uh, finally, I think what's of interest to a lot of families, uh, our families know that we had water tested through the state water testing program last winter into the spring. And uh, in some of the bubblers and drinking fountains, we were found to have some higher than um, expected um, levels of copper or lead. Mm -hmm. And so those um, bubblers and uh, drinking fountains have been replaced. Uh, in the Robinson School and in the middle school, re we replaced them with nine different, um, nine each in the schools. We have nine water filling stations at Qualters Middle School. At the, uh, the Robinson, they're a little bit young for the water filling stations, so we did a combination of water filling stations as well as drinking fountains for them. So a lot of new um, spiffed up parts of our buildings. Excellent, and I'm sure the people who uh, come to drive through the parking lots and pick up their kids will really appreciate the new parking. It really, it's, it is um, great for our families because we, um, you know, as you know, we have 20 plus buses that come through on uh, three runs a day, and we have a lot of cars, uh, student driven as well as parent driven, and so I do think they're appreciating the changes. I think also as a as community, our residents appreciate our facilities looking good. We have excellent schools and we like to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward at all times. I think um, parents and students, when something looks good on the outside, you like to walk in the door, you know? Absolutely. It, you, you feel ready. <laughs> you do. And not a part of the campus, but Memorial Hall is also undergoing renovations. Uh, this is capital improvement program money uh, that is being funded. You know, it's a town project that had been put out uh, several years ago. And uh, the building, built in 1899, we're getting new shingles. And our windows are, are being um, cleaned up and reglazed. So, oh, nice. yeah, it's wonderful. So now you will be walking into something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> yeah. We are very fortunate. The, the building is beautiful. And so to be able to see those... Um, that renovation is wonderful to a historic building. Oh, good. Well, we've been discussing the physical improvements to the school. Let's move on um, to the scholastic improvements and initiatives that uh, are new this year. Yeah, thank you. Um, last, last year, my first year as superintendent, one of my jobs was to create a district improvement plan. Now, when we talk about a school district, um, generally in town you might hear people say the school system, the school department. Uh, in Massachusetts Department of Education we are a school district, the Mansfield Public Schools. So all combined we're a district. So it is my job as a superintendent to create goals 
and um, to set direction for a multi-year plan. At the same time, our principals are responsible for uh, developing with their school councils a um, multi-year plan to improve their schools. And in the past, we had um, pretty much silos. There'd be a district plan, there were school plans in each school. And one of my goals last year was to uh, create an aligned plan so that we were all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And I equate it to as we plant seeds, which is what we do in schools. We plant seeds, and if we scatter them haphazardly, then we might get some to grow. But if we strategically plant those seeds, then we have a better chance of successful growing. And that's what we're looking for. So our school councils work together with the principals. Um, our principals worked with me. Uh, and we were able to develop a very comprehensive uh, improvement plan. Uh, we have four goals that all of our schools are working on. Uh, they have to do with our instructional program, our curriculum, engaging our students is one goal. Another goal is to proactively plan for and provide supports in the form of academic or social and emotional supports for students. We want to engage our families and the community within our schools. And we also um, continue to collaborate to learn. And um, so to put that in perspective, um, we'll take that engaging family and communities, what that looks like. At the Rolling Green, their goal this year, or one of their goals is to, uh, they are trying to develop a support group for grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. Oh, what a great thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, at the Robinson and JJ, one of their goals is to really focus on having a strong communication plan because there is a new reading program that has replaced the one that we have had since 2007. And so the uh, principals and school leadership teams and teachers are looking to really maintain uh, strong communication with parents so that they can support their children at home with the new literacy model. Because the reading, having worked in the, <laughs> in the Robinson, uh, the reading plan is, is so important. Absolutely. I mean, it's the foundation for everything mm -hmm. you're doing. Absolutely. Um, at the uh, Qualtrics Middle School, they are looking to develop a series of parent information evenings so that they, too, can support their uh, students. And so they're looking at a number of different topics that they will be presenting to families. Um, at the high school, they are engaging families, more so the community, because they're using our community resource of our uh, public safety officials, the uh, school resource officers, to uh, deliver uh, safety training to students through our health and wellness classes. And at the district level, uh, under um, Michael Conley, our assistant superintendent's leadership, he is overseeing the development of a multi-year technology plan. And on that team, there are parents, community members. So you see that one goal playing out throughout the entire system. It seems like it, it totally makes sense mm -hmm. because the energies at each school are going towards and going in the same direction, you know, to achieve the goals that they're looking for. And it makes sense makes sense. Yeah, aligning um, has made um, perfect sense to us. We're all putting our energies in that same direction, as you said. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Mm. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, we are going to be offering uh, periodic updates and meetings, uh, benchmarks, and um, talking about those at school committee meetings each month. So uh, look for more about that coming up. Excellent. Excellent. Now, the uh, Mansfield school population, like the country's population, is growing in diversity. And how is the school system addressing that diversity? Mm -hmm. You are right. We are a more diverse community than, um, than in the past. Uh, right now, for example, at the Robinson School, there are 14 languages that are first language before English in our students' homes. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. that is a lot. Isn't that something? And um, so to help with that growing population of students who are English learners, we have um, added 
um, teaching staff in that department over the past 10 years. And um, we are fortunate that we have been able to add someone at the high school this year to, to help with the population of students who are English learners. Uh, it is um, quite challenging for students to come into the United States, to come into our schools and have to achieve on the MCAS and other assessments. And so we do, um, we, we are proud of the students because they come in with a desire to learn and grow and we want to support that. Uh, about three years ago, we did have in the schools a couple of, I will say, isolated incidents that were concerning to us that there seemed to us uh, that there was a kind of an intolerance of differences. And so we have worked very hard with our student groups and um, our teachers have done some terrific lessons, whether they be uh, at, all less, at all levels of the schools to really be able to help us celebrate uh, the diversity within our schools. I'm also really proud of the fact that we uh, brought in some outside consultants who have helped us. Uh, one of the groups, the Anti-Defamation League, has um, done some uh, training of not only our adults but also our students. Uh, they have formed a group uh, which is called a World of Difference at the high school with a sister organization at the middle school. And they are, they are students who are really focused on helping um, all of us really appreciate the diversity and be able to uh, develop in, in a, a cultural competency. And we have the cultural diversity as well as the learning abilities. Yes. We have a lot of people that have all different levels and um, we have a, a great system for helping those people or those students on every level, you know. Definitely. And um, there's this, we are also, you know, a part of the wider community. and. Um, Recently, I've reached out to some of our students and some of the groups uh, to see if they would be interested in participating in an event that will be coming up on October 6th. It's a Saturday. It'll be held at South Common, and it's uh, hosted and sponsored by the National Black Doll Museum, and that will be uh, the celebration of Abolition Day. Uh, Mansfield should be very proud of the fact that um, in 1836, our community uh, signed an anti-slavery um, contract before the nation did and so that October 6th day is going to be open to um, all all members of our community but you know we're hoping to have some students participate and some of our families participate because it should be a really special celebration. The Black Doll Museum is a gem it in is. our community and I think uh, a lot of people don't know about it or they feel oh well, that's not for me it's just a doll museum mm -hmm. but it's so much more. It tells stories, it um, opens dialogue um, that is needed um, not just in Mansfield, in society in general, but no, they are truly um, so supportive of our community and our schools and, and meet a very strong uh, need for open dialogue about some very difficult subjects these mm -hmm. days. And I know that they're promoting that um, in different locations. It's almost like a, a moving discussion yes. that goes from one place to another to mm -hmm. another. And uh, I think they're really doing something of value, uh, you know, for the community. Absolutely. So it's great that the school system is supporting mm -hmm. that. Definitely. You know? mm -hmm. um, and something that's on the mind of many parents today is the safety of their children mm -hmm. in the schools and the children mm -hmm. themselves uh, worried about their safety. Can you address mm -hmm. that? Absolutely. I think that um, when you hear of the crimes that are taking place in schools and communities throughout the country, it is on everyone's minds. Uh, we're very fortunate that we um, were able to add a school resource officer to our um, schools this year. Uh, Detective Ken Wright has served with us for a number of years as school resource officer. It is a job that um, more than one person is needed for that job. He's done an en enormous amount of work uh, supporting our students and our staff, but we we're very fortunate that this year we were able to add Officer Derek McCune. So both officers will be stationed in our schools on a daily basis. 
uh, that is um, that is an opportunity for our students to develop relationships with uh, police officers and to know that there is someone right in our midst every day. Uh, we also have, uh, we're fortunate because Chief Sellon also has uh, walkthroughs of some of his regular patrols. So uh, a police presence is um, very familiar within our schools. We also, um, this year, I just mentioned briefly that our school resource officers are going to be doing some training, the four L's, the um, lo uh, locate, lock down, leave, and live, the safety training that um, police have been offering to the community and to our teachers last year. They're going to be offering it to students at the high school this year. Uh, because we believe that educating students, empowering them to be able to help make some of the decisions in emergencies is, um, it's powerful. Mm. Uh, we also are going to be planning some unannounced lockdown drills. You know, okay. in the past when we've done our lockdown drills, we've tried to uh, do them in a very friendly way, I guess you might say. You know, oftentimes parents need to come in to dismiss a student to go to a doctor's appointment or, or whatnot. And so we've always given families an idea of when we're doing the lockdown and uh, made sure it was well publicized. By doing that, it meant that our teachers, our staff, our students, everyone knew about it. And we, we want to make our lockdown drills um, a bit more authentic as our fire drills are, and that is that there is no real advance warning um, that we will call for a lockdown drill, and then wherever the students are, they're going to learn how to be able to um, get into a classroom, and the teacher will be able to lock down and run that classroom in that way. So it's a little bit different. Um, you know, we never want parents to. Uh, be nervous if they come to the school, the door is locked and no one is answering. We will try to put little notes on the door so parents are aware of what's going on. But there will be some unannounced lockdown drills. Um, two recent um, situations I think really can drive home the idea of the partnerships that we have and the way our students are prepared. On the third day of school, Friday of the first week, um, at about 8.02 in the morning, when, mind you, at 8.05, the buses unload in front of JJ. Well, at about 8.02, a smoke detector had some dust, and it caused the fire alarms to go off. And so we had alarms going off with about 800 students ready to come into school. And so that was a really unusual situation. But um, the fire department came in, immediate response. Uh, they had us keep the students right on the buses. And so the students were controlled and students who had walked or been dropped off by parents were being taken care of by staff members. And uh, they were able to uh, deal with that little uh, um, surprise emergency uh, very well. And uh, all was well, but it, it really, um, spoke to the fact that our fire, our fire department knows the school routines. They know what can work. They knew how to best help our administrators and teachers work with our students. Uh, the second was, uh, we were very fortunate the other evening, Friday evening, we had um, a very special dedication of Heroes Corner mm -hmm. at Mansfield High School. And uh, Michael Raymond, our veterans agent, and our local veterans groups were very supportive of that event. And they were able to uh, schedule in a Black Hawk helicopter, which was a huge treat. But when we did a walkthrough of the event with the pilot a couple of days in advance, he walked in and he looked at the public safety officials who were there and he's like, whoa, I've never been to a meeting where we have so many people who are here to help figure this out with me. And uh, it really speaks to the fact that both police and fire were there, were able to help him make some decisions, were able to give the schools the okay as to what we would do. So those two events really um, helped to show what a collaborative relationship and what a true partnership the schools have with our Mansfield police and fire departments. And I think that should, really help to make parents feel 
that things are under control mm -hmm. as much as they possibly right. can mm -hmm. be, you know, in situations. And I know um, sometimes when um, I've recorded both chiefs talking, mm -hmm. et cetera, they have talked about how quickly they could move students from one yes. school to another if needed or move everybody out if needed because we have all our schools together in one area which most communities don't. That's very true. Um, you know, I will be coming to the community in uh, a few months. There's, since um, really last February is when um, police chief, fire chief, um, my school leadership team, we've been working on school safety, school security, how we can make improvements. And I know improvements are continuous improvements. You'll, you'll, it, there will never be a perfect anything. Uh, but we will be putting together, we have put together a package of uh, security and uh, safety improvements that we would like to make in the schools. Uh, everything from door security to cameras to um, other types of um, identification systems. And so as we move forward through the year, we will be um, bringing this to our community and hoping that we will be able to um, uh, seek out funding for some of those projects. Mm -hmm. It is definitely on everyone's mind these days, school safety and security. And speaking of the safety of the students, mm -hmm. um, vaping is something that is rampant uh, throughout many, most communities. And I know schools are very uh, proactive uh, about uh, dealing with this. And I was wondering what the Mansfield schools were doing. Mm -hmm. Vaping is... Um, such an issue on the part of not just high school students, middle school students is where we're seeing um, uh, great numbers. I heard this morning at our leadership team meeting, uh, something like one in two students you know, nationwide have tried vaping or the, the electronic cigarettes. And um, we have, we put um, education and consequences in place because both are needed. Um, we work with our students through our health classes trying to help them understand the dangers of vaping and we um, you know hopefully we'll see improvements there. In our community that CARE survey that we do, it's a state offered survey and we do it every uh, two years. Uh, that is where we're seeing the increase in student use of substance abuse is that uh, the vaping and e-cigarettes. Um, at the high school, we took off the exterior doors of the uh, large girls' and boys' bathrooms. Uh, there are still privacy screens, so that they do have privacy. But we were seeing some of the vaping going on in, in the restrooms. And every student should feel very safe and secure and feel comfortable going into a clean restroom where kids are only doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we're hoping that we see a decrease in vaping in those areas. Um, in terms of education, again, through our health classes, but also we are trying to um, help our parents and community come to understand the, the dangers of vaping. Um, on October 10th, we're going to have a, an information evening. It's sponsored by Karen uh, Treatment Centers, their student support services, and they will be coming in and doing presentation for parents. It'll be held at Qualters Middle School, and uh, again, one of their series of parent events. So we're hoping that we will be able to decrease numbers because it is a danger, but the kids, um, what we're hearing from them is that they don't see it as a danger. So we need to educate. Right. And many levels. Yes. <laughs> many levels. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything else that you want to, uh, to add to oh. our little interview here? Well, you know, I, I think one thing I'd like to mention, um, some may remember that we had a large number of retirees across mm. our district in all areas last spring. And so we did do a bit of hiring this summer. Uh, there are some uh, new faces that are um, very public to a lot of people. I mean, we are very fortunate that we've hired some great teachers, custodians, um, office assistants, paraprofessionals, those in the kitchen. But I think that uh, the people that our families see are those in, who are leading our schools. So a couple of people I'd like to mention. Uh, Dave McGovern, 
Dave is, uh, has been promoted from assistant principal at Qualtrics Middle School to principal of the middle school. Uh, to replace him, Michelle Kitchen has been hired uh, from special ed teacher. She's transferred from special ed teacher at Qualtrics to uh, assistant principal. At the um, high school, uh, Abigail Barlas has been a guidance counselor for several years at the high school and has transferred into an assistant principal role. Uh, the JJ, uh, John Fass, has come to us from another district where he served as an assistant principal and has come to join a team at JJ. Um, a few people might recall that we hired a new director of special education. Mm -hmm. Jim Leonard was hired. He was promoted from within last spring. And uh, replacing him as the assistant director at the middle school and the high school is Dr. Zach Abrams. So we have some, um, some great uh, new administrators. Some have come from within. We love being able to hire from within. Uh, but we've also brought in some fresh ideas and new perspectives from hiring from outside the district. It's exciting it to is. bring in new people. It really you is. You know, and mm -hmm. people change around and you get, as you said, kind of like new perspectives mm -hmm. on old jobs. Yes. <laughs> I say, and it mm -hmm. kind of in invigorates every everyone mm -hmm. around them. And uh, Absolutely. I, I'm sure your meetings will be different. That's right. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, but you know, I think that I'd like to uh, just make mention of a, a thank you to our, our students and their families. Our kids come to school really ready to learn, prepared for school, ready to learn. And our families support our schools as does the greater community. Uh, our staff, faculty and staff has done a tremendous job. We have had a very smooth start to the school year and it is truly due to their efforts. So uh, I feel like we are off and running and uh, excited about the, what the year will bring. Excellent. I hope it's smooth sailing <laughs> right through May and we June. Do too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Teresa, for coming and discussing the changes and the new initiatives in the school system. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you, Marjorie, for letting me talk about our wonderful public schools. And thank you for joining us today and we hope you join us next time on The Learning Curve.